This badge, South Africans love. And to be honest, I haven't always understood why. When you take their models and stack it up against competitors, you know they very seldom end up on top, but where they do end up on the top is when it comes to sales. It's because they're reliable and dependable, you'll say. I guess you wouldn't blindly believe that unless there was some merit in the notion. Or is it perhaps that their cars, although many of them for me are bland and uninspiring, are exactly the cars that you as consumers want to drive. And let me tell you what South Africans want to drive right now is an SUV. And I think Toyota is on the money with their new rush. It looks really good, eh? especially like this, dead on from the front. That prominent grill, those LED lights that are upswept. I like the two ridges on the bonnet as well, very nice. And even the detailing around the front fogs give it a real purposeful look, very nice. It's amazing what a big difference a good set of wheels can do. It really gives a car personality and I like the two-tone 17-inch alloys on the Rush. It has class-leading ground clearance of 220 mils and with all that cladding in the right places, the crossover from MPV to a legitimate SUV I think is complete. What is also interesting, even though the Rush is only rear wheel drive, it's got a weight depth of 600 millimeters. And with its rough road compliance, trust me, this car is gonna to go to places that the competitors wouldn't even consider. I like these two strong lines that run the length of the car, in particular the shoulder line that runs into the LED tail light cluster. Without them, it would be a pretty bland sideshow. The color-coded boot spoiler finishes things off nicely. But all the action is in the rear because Toyota South Africa has decided not to bring the rush out with a third row of seats. The cup holders, of course, are the giveaway. I think it's a good move though because the rush and the Avanza then clearly don't compete. And what it does give you is an SUV that now really does have legitimate space. 607 liters in fact. And yes, you can fold the seats forward and when you do, oh, it's pretty much cavernous. But this does pose a bit of a problem for Toyota and it is one that they are working on, is how do they provide a cover for the boot area, something that you have to have in South Africa. Space in the rear is also really good. Take a look, plenty of legroom and headroom. And what is nice for your comfort, the seats do recline and there's also climate control. They've also added electric windows and there are twin cup holders in the doors as well as a 12 volt power supply. But what I'm most happy about is the safety. The Rush has six airbags. That is four more than any of their competitors. And with them choosing to scrap the seats in the rear, it now means everyone is covered. That's brilliant. And it has vehicle stability control, a non-negotiable for me. Guaranteed, the first thing that you're gonna notice when you get behind the wheel of the Rush is this, the seven inch touchscreen, which is beautifully integrated into the dash. It literally has got everything. It's got its own navigation system. It's got an HDMI cable port. It's got USB. It's got Bluetooth connectivity. And very cool, of course, it also works with my iPhone. So I've got Apple CarPlay on it as well. For the modern day consumer, this is probably the biggest selling point for them. The steering wheel has some functionality on it, but let me tell you what irritates me the most, is that it's got rack, but it doesn't have a reach adjustment, and that makes it really difficult for me to get into my ultimate comfortable driving position. But in general, you really cannot fault the specification level on the Rush. It also has electric foldable mirrors, it's got climate control, and there's park distance control with the reverse camera. Oh yes, it also has plenty of cup holders up front. I like what they've done with the two-tone on the dash, it looks really good. But then, to go and put it on the doors, I mean think about it, it's going to get so much hand action here that within a week or two it's going to be grubby. Not a good move. So it's been all positives up till now, here comes its biggest negative. It's no rush to drive. It's tech that has been around for years, the 1.5 litre VVTI petrol engine produces 77 kilowatts and 136 newton meters. It's modest and you have a choice of either a five-speed manual or a four-speed auto. You're going to have to go the five-speed manual especially up at altitude because you literally do need 
to get every last bit of power out of this engine. I don't think that four-speed auto is going to work at all. And because of that, it's also quite noisy when you are on the open road. There isn't much refinement around that. It feels like when you are driving at highway speeds that it could probably do with a sixth gear. Its biggest competitor, the Honda BRV, has a six-speed manual linked to its uh, 1.5 litre engine. But then again, that also poses another problem because there's not enough torque. You're probably going to find yourself going through gears unnecessarily. But the actual ride quality, it's not bad. It's actually got the rough road conditions covered and it gives you that typical Toyota nothing can break me feel about it. It's very solid, very dependable. But let's keep things in context here, and that's where price comes into it. At just under 300k for the manual and 313,000 Rand for the auto, these criticisms I think can be largely overlooked. So, the Russia's biggest negatives, its old school engine and drivetrain and drive refinement, are actually things that consumers shopping in this segment place less importance on. The boxes they want, the Rush triple ticks. Looks, specification, and most importantly, price. And it certainly helps that the box it comes in has this badge on it.